production. Those are there to keep the kids busy. They are very welcome. Make or don't make is absolutely fine. The congregation loves it. We get it. We're glad they're here. Okay. We'll try to keep this to like two, two and a half hours. Okay. Thanks, Mark. See you again, Claire. Good morning. Good morning, all you folks on the stream. We are in a state of utter flux, not chaos, but flux today. There are all things happening. The choir has invaded my space, and apparently they've posted notice that they are going to usurp my space and that I'm to be moved over there. So we'll have to see how that goes. But I got to get something in the swap. Barry's like, oh, change in the church? That's right. You all have to switch the way you turn uh, your heads. And uh, I was downstairs talking uh, about the, the, we have all these rooms down there that are being underutilized. And so I talked to Andrea about it and the, they've kind of taken over the conference room, which is great because it meets her needs for a variety of kids and age groups, and it looks very cool down there. The room they use next, most frequently, or would like to use, is the puppet room. Uh, they think that's pretty cool, so we're going to leave that, which leaves the tent room, the storytelling room, and the arts and crafts room. So this, I'm just floating some ideas for you to think about. The craft room would become a game room for the kids. We already have an air hockey table, and they could be there. And then the tent room would be a bit of a lounge. We, call it, we could call it the ladies' lounge if you want, but they meet women's circle and book groups, so enough places to have a uh, seat, maybe six to eight people. I think we could do that there. Uh, and so that's what's happening today. And that, that all just started happening today. So we'll see where it goes. And in case you wondered what happened to the choir, here they are. So there, that's it. Uh, Linda Potter is in the nursery. And I think uh, Gwen and Daphne might have gone down to help out. So thank you. And so that's terrific. And if you want to go down there, great. If you don't, I was just saying to another family that we enjoy having the kids in uh, worship. And, and whatever noise or no, don't, not noise they make is absolutely fine. Uh, we're just thrilled to have him. Right, Aubrey? Correct? Aubrey, try to keep it down, please. <laughs> and I do have a sermon today, but I want to bring you up to speed on a couple of pastoral things before we start. Uh, first of which is Katie Gollinger is here. She may be down in the nursery, though. She had surgery for a herniated disc and found immediate relief. And so she's a happy, ha much happier camper, and she is here today. Bill Rohde was in the hospital, and now he's back home, and that's getting to be a, a more onerous task for Marilyn, uh, both because of some health issues and, and other things as well. And I want to let you know that Chris Lyons was admitted to the hospital. She's having some, pro they thought it was a medication thing, but probably not. She's having some issues with her legs and feet and narrowing of the spine, and it's quite a concerning situation. She's in Augensburg at Claxton, so I'll be going to visit her today. So please keep them in your prayer. And if you have not heard, Lachlan was born, and this is his first uh, streaming worship service today. So everyone say, say, hi, Lachlan. Hi, Lachlan. 
And uh, Sean and Kristen, Linda and I would like to stop over this afternoon or after church if it's okay, and we'll text first to make sure you're both still awake. <laughs> yes. Any other announcements? Glad you're here. Let's join together. Oh, oh, oh. I... Hold on. I just want, can you hear me? Probably can hear me without this, just saying. I uh, just wanted to remind everyone that the bazaar is back on this year for October 22nd. There are sign-up sheets in the foyer for the luncheon. The bazaar is from 9 to 2. The luncheon is from 11 to 1. So we need help uh, for food donations for the luncheon and for volunteers. There's also a thousand places, well, maybe not quite a thousand, many places if you want to come and help out at the bazaar. There's a baked good table, uh, the elegant junk. There's, I'm sure we have a job for you, a job that you'll have fun doing. It's really, it really is a good time. I'm not just trying to you know, drum up volunteers here. It really is a lot of fun. So there are sign-up sheets there, and we hope to see you on the 22nd. You can keep that. You can just put it on the pew. Any other announcements as I'm looking and watching? Nothing. Let us join together and worship the Lord. I don't understand why you can't be over there if you're going to sing here, though. Right? I mean, couldn't you sit there and stand here? You could. Uh, oh, okay. Please stand and join with me in the responsive call to worship. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Listen, all you who suffer and wear fetters. And all who are made to stand far away. Lift up your voices and cry for mercy. Come before God and be made whole again. Let us sing with thanksgiving and present ourselves to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for the flux of the Spirit this morning. For each person here. For the moving parts, we ask that you settle us in our spirit and our heart as we open them up to your nudging one way or the other this day. Give us hope, give us purpose, give us drive. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our first hymn is number 487. We're in the purple hymnal. These treasured children, we're doing the blessing of the children in just a bit this morning.
As we remain standing, I would draw your attention to the Unison Prayer of Confession in the bulletin. I invite you to join with me, your neighbors, your friends, as we do the hard work of the faith together. Let us pray. Universal God, we are continually tempted to localize you, to confine you to a certain place, to a particular time, to a past experience. Forgive the limitation by our faith that does not expect you where we are in our present and in our future as in our past. Through Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. We'll affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed in its inside cover of any hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us be forgiving of each other and ourselves. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. The scripture reading today is from Psalm 66. It's the first 12 verses. Hear the word of the Lord. Make a joyful noise to God all the earth. Sing the glory of God's name. Give to God glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you, sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. God is awesome in deeds among mortals. God turned the sea into dry land, and they passed through the river on foot. There we rejoiced in God who rules by might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of God's praise be heard. Who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip? For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. Here ends the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the kids up. And I think to do this, we're going to do it in two motions. We'll have the kids sit in the front pews first. And then we'll do the second part in a minute. Here's some more seats. Okay, apparently the gals are on this side and the guys are on this side. <laughs>
Yes, this morning for your blessing, the choir has prepared a song for you. It's called The Bible Tells Me So, and it deals with faith, such as your faith in God, your faith in your family. It also deals with hope, what you might hope for, a peaceful world, good health. It also deals with perhaps the most important, charity. And charity might mean giving your favorite teddy bear or a toy to a less fortunate child than you. So we hope you will enjoy The Bible Tells Me So and have faith, hope, and charity.
determination and patience and patience. <laughs> Sit here. No. Now, I try to explain there to Hunter's dad that we're 100% comfortable with whatever kids do in worship. Are we not? Yes? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Including running all over the place, yes. saying what they want. Okay, great. Making noise, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, super. <laughs> great. Love to have them. Once upon a 
since we're sharing, I will say that it is nice to have you up here with me. <laughs> we knew that. This morning, I would like to share with you a soon-to-be-not-so-secret fantasy that I've had for quite a number of years now. Relax. <laughs> Don't get nervous. It isn't that kind of fantasy. I admit it's a bit wild, but not necessarily intimate. Then again, maybe it is. Before I get all that, however, I would like to tell you, both those of you seated here and those at home on the stream, and there are quite a few of you, how proud I am of our church. Okay, we got to shut the cell phones off now. Yeah. All right. If you're going to be up here, you got to behave. <laughs> I'm proud of how good the church looks from the outside, and, and Rich gets special dispensation today for his cell phone because he painted the railing outside last week. <laughs> I'm proud of how good it looks on the outside, and I'm particularly proud how good the church feels from the inside. Neither thing in and of itself is any small feat. Having both of these occur together at the same time, however, is a rare confluence. While we should be most concerned about what goes on within these walls of our church, and we most certainly are, the walls themselves are also of great significance, especially to those who live their lives beyond them. Having spent almost all of my free time for the past five years constructing a modest, single-story, 300-square-foot building, I can tell you this stone church and that adjacent brick Christian education wing each represent an enormous undertaking both on the part of those who erected them and now on the part of those who maintain them. See, I'm slipping in a little stewardship stuff early on here. <laughs> now, having spent the past 24 years working with all of you to build a congregation that is authentic and fun-loving and faith-filled and compassionate and generous and non-judgmental, I can tell you that what we now enjoy as our life together is every bit as enormous in scope and frankly, nothing short of miraculous. Awesome deeds indeed, and as I said, a rare confluence. Especially in this day and age, with church membership, vitality, and rele relevance on the wane in most of the nation, and as many congregations struggle just to keep the lamps lit and burning and stay one step ahead of the peeling paint. To be rather blunt about it, this church and our congregation excite me, expire, inspire me, instill in me nothing less than a sense of awe and wonder. I can't believe we've pulled this off. Some days I just want to jump up and down which is exactly the kind of image that is conjured in our minds when we read in today's scripture reading from the 66th Psalm. The writer, as we readily witness, is pretty jacked up. Make a joyful noise, all the earth. Sing the glory of God's name. Give to God glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. You can almost hear the pleading in the psalmist's voice when she says, Come and see! Come and see the awesome deeds God has brought to this world and to our lives. Like turning the sea to dry land, which evokes memories of the exodus from bondage in Egypt, as this is most certainly a psalm of thanksgiving to be sung at Passover. This sentiment of, come and see, is exactly the same thing I feel like shouting whenever I think about the awesome deeds God is accomplishing through this church and her congregation. Look at these kids here today. Look at the fact that the, uh, that the choir wants to usurp my space here in the worship <laughs> space. Look at that. We're talking about a ladies' lounge in the kids' room, activity room for the kids. But this is also the very thing 
I wish to gently whisper in suggestion to those who come to the church for counseling and support and do not have a church home such as the one we have built and enjoyed together with God. Come and see. Come and see. Such words of invitation and enticement are exactly the kind of thing that belongs spelled out in bright lights outside of our church. Which brings us right back to my aforementioned fantasy, namely a new sign in front of our church to replace the ancient crumbling brick wall and the old school letter board that currently sits at the corner of Park Street facing Morgan's and the library. Imagine, if you will, a brightly lit, but not garish, Wi-Fi enabled digital sign that could be programmed with a smartphone or computer to say whatever we wanted. What a game changer. No more sandwich board with letters to blow off or to be knocked over in the wind or to be carted off halfway across town by overzealous college students who partied a bit too much. We could advertise our rummage sale, our bazaar, our fundraising dinners, as well as change the worship time simply by typing them in on a keyboard. No more hanging ice-cold metal letters with bare fingers in the middle of winter while you crouch under the plexiglass door, which you are sure is going to come crashing down on your head with the next gust of wind. We could put the sermon title up each week, announce the birthdays or anniversaries of folks from the congregation, display public service announcements, remind people to vote, welcome students, and thank veterans, all with a few keystrokes done from the warmth and comfort <clears throat> of the building or literally anywhere on the planet. We'd give the American theater and their marquee a real run for their money. Now, I'm sure that I'm not alone in receiving those forwarded emails from church folk you know about the funny things that appear on the signs outside of churches. Am I the only one that gets them? Do you get them? Oh, okay. I guess that's it. Well, here are a few that I've received from some well-intentioned parishioners. Does your life stink? We've got a pew for you. (laughs) Bob Duda told me that one. God needs spiritual fruits, not religious nuts. <laughs> Tweet others the way you'd like to be tweeted. Whoever is praying for snow, please stop. <laughs> Having trouble sleeping? Try one of our pastor's sermons. <laughs> now is a good time to visit. Our pastor is on vacation. <laughs> God loves you whether you like it or not. Prevent truth decay. Brush up on your Bible. That's for Kelly right there. There you go. Woo! Too cold to change the sign. Message inside. Walmart is not the only saving place. Come on in. Jesus is coming. Look busy. And those such sayings are often at least marginally amusing. If we ever did erect one of those programmable signs, I can absolutely guarantee you we'd be taking a much deeper dive. This fantasy of mine about having a programmable sign really starts to reach full bloom when I consider all the catchy and clever sayings I could post. What fun! For starters, there would be the occasional song lyric from the Grateful Dead, our job is to shed light, not to master it. Or there would be a quote, the privilege of a lifetime is becoming who you really are, Carl Jung. Or a poignant scripture verse, all the rivers rung to the sea, but still it is not full, Ecclesiastes 1.7. Now I'm telling you, it would get to be a real thing here in Canton, with people wondering each week, what are the Presbyterians going to say next? (laughs) We'd be the talk of the town, there's no doubt about it. In fact, this is true, for the past 24 years, I've been collecting these sayings as they pop into my head and saving them to my computer. I've got a whole big file. Here's just a few. 
Let's get it together, together. Truth seekers and truth speakers welcome here. Faith isn't about having the answers, it's about living with the questions. Put yourself in a position to be kind. Don't, don't wait to celebrate. It is our responsibility to be part of the larger plan. We don't have all the answers, but we do take all the questions. Preaching more and more about less and less. The crisis is on its way. It will solve everything. Intelligence is the ability to discern the difference between things. Wisdom is not needing to. You don't realize you have the gift until you give it to another. Faith is not a possession. It's a lifestyle. It is less about being led and more about finding our way. Awareness is the first degree of involvement. Are you moving mountains? Be sure to put them in the right place. This week, our snazzy electronic programmable sign would undoubtedly have read, Come and see. Now, a few years ago, I actually got to the point of calling a local sign company to get a price on such a sign, and I, I just about fell off my chair. Anywhere from five to $7,000. Clearly, my fantasy will have to remain just that, a fantasy. That's an awful lot of money with which to roll dice when we have no idea whatsoever what kind of impact it would have, if any. Time and time again, research has shown that the very best marketing campaign for a church is word of mouth, inviting friends and neighbors to simply come and see. Which, of course, begs the question, come and see what exactly? Well, certainly there are the kinds of mighty deeds of God spoken of in Psalm 66, but those tend to come either with a certain unpredictable frequency or slowly over time such that they are hard to detect on any given day. I think a better answer to the question is to be found at the very end of today's scripture reading. What we are inviting people to come and see is a spacious place. Though lofty and impressive, this does not refer to the size of our sanctuary, but rather having the space, the room, the opportunity to grow and roam and rest and explore and remember and make mistakes. And as Carl Jung said, for people to find out not only who they really are, but also who they want to be, and who they are meant to be. Now here on the park, we are interested in hemming people in with oppressive rules, excessive doctrine, or undue social pressure. Instead, we're here to help God and each other to loose the fetters placed upon our lives, to breathe deep, to stretch out, to plumb the depths, to sustain the journey, and to bring a sense of wonder, awe, and appreciation for all that God provides us. To attain a breath-catching view of this world and our place in it from the vantage point of the vistas provided by our own heart and mind and spirit. Now, if I am completely honest, I do have a fantasy. But it really has nothing to do with a fancy programmable sign, though that'd be nice. It has to do with this church, our church, being the talk of the town. Not because of the things we say, but because of the things we do and what we provide. A spacious place where we can be intimate with each other. Where you truly get to know people and be known by others in authentic ways. Where we stop pretending and just be real with one another. Where we have sufficient trust in ourselves and our neighbors to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Where we can 
actually live out our faith as a lifestyle or at the very least make an honest attempt to do so and to share all of this with the people who are living their lives from within these walls and especially beyond these walls. Now that's the almost amen. Almost. In the continued spirit of sharing, I'd like to add an addendum to today's sermon. As is found in several other places in the Bible, today's reading begins with the admonition that all the earth make a joyful noise to God. Now, I love the idea of a joyful noise, though I confess to never really possessing an idea of the exact nature of what it means, joyful noise. But this week, as happenstance would have it, I figured it out because Sean sent me a photo of his son and Kristen's son's Lachlan finally being brought out into this spacious place, which is this world. And he's just tearing it up. His mouth is wide open, screaming, wailing. That's a joyful noise. And that photo is on the digital copy of the sermon, which is going to be emailed to all of you, and you can check it out. And the choir was heard to say, Amen. Amen. Ritual of friendship. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. I got to bring this up to speed here. Pat's bringing the prayer sheet up. Okay, we've got, well, it says 60, 76 views. So either that's a lot of people beyond those that are signed in. We got one person who's joining and quitting and joining and quitting and joining and quitting. <laughs> Just to bring our numbers up. We're trending in the right direction. You've trended up here. Okay, so on the stream this morning is uh, Sean Booten. He says, it's Lachlan Roan Booten's first sermon. No pressure, Reverend Mike. <laughs> Good morning from very sleepy Kristen and Sean. I hope the sermon met your expectations, Sean. Carolyn O'Connor, rain or shine, I do like to greet everyone at church. Betty Phillips says good morning. The Parkers say good morning. Lynn Miller says good morning. Betsy Robinson welcomes Lachlan. And Sean said, yes, it's okay to come. I did have a, a service. Bob came over and played at Partridge Knoll. And it was nice to see our Presbyterians over there. And I know they're on the stream. Uh, time to share joys and concerns. I let you know a bunch of news. Uh, but also... The Sean and Kristen have a pretty good support network through the university and Tai Chi, so they have some food coming, and they're both sets of grandparents here. So when that all wanes and dis dissipates, then we'll, we'll hop to it a little bit on food, but for now they're good. We're going to keep on our prayer Mark and Nancy Brown, who are on a long journey of healing and recovering from their grief. <coughs> We're delighted that Katie is doing better. Prayers for the Boswell family, Brian and Judy Norton, both have COVID and they're recovering, but apparently Shirley does not yet. Prayers, continued prayers for Colleen Grant and Mitzi. We pray for the Basford Rohde family. Again, prayers for Krista and Nick. Uh, Andrea had surgery, and so she's down there uh, teaching with uh, a wound that's healing on her leg. So prayers for her, but she's on the mend. Rhonda Walt has a, a, a bum foot. Is she doing any better? A little bit. Are you doing any better? Yes. 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 That's right. Yes. Keep your mouth shut. That's right. That's, right. <laughs> That's my wedding advice I always give. Keep your mouth shut. Anything else you care to be sharing for? With? Yes. That's right, Marshall. Keep your mouth shut. That's it. That's all you need to know, brother. Anything else? It is fun to have you here. Let us pray. Gracious Almighty God, we give you thanks this day and... We are mindful of all the parents visiting kids this, this weekend in Canton, and we ask for safe passage and travels back home for them. We pray for the children of our church, our greatest treasure, and we ask that you allow us to hold them dear and special and safe 
Let them know that they are sacred and that we understand them to be so. We pray for moms and dads and the great challenge they have in raising children. We're particularly mindful of all the new babies born in our church this year, particularly um, Lachlan this past week, and prayers for Sean and Kristen as they adjust to this new rhythm that will not settle into any kind of rhythm for quite a number of decades. Please bless them, O oh God. We give thanks for grandparents and for family and friends and church to help support families in their need. We ask today that you be with Chris Lyon, who is facing a very challenging health situation, be with Bill Rohde, who is also facing difficult health considerations, and be with Marilyn in support. Prayers, continued prayers of healing for Katie Gollinger. We give thanks today for this church and her mission in this world. We ask healing for Maggie, River, and August. We ask healing for Ann and Bob and Jimmy. We ask comfort for Else, for Sarah. And we ask today that you be with those celebrating birthdays this week, for Josh on Wednesday, uh, for Maria and Ellen McMaster, and Frederick on Friday. We also remember Andrea and Joe and their anniversary this coming Saturday. We ask that we might continue to be a place that beckons everyone to come and see and that we provide a spacious place for people to grow in body, mind, and spirit. We ask these things in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Time for a little shared decision making. I realize that in the past few years, we've been changing the bulletin to adapt to COVID and all that stuff. Am I wrong in that we used to stand for the doxology and sing that? Okay. We, we did okay do we want to return to that yes. are there others who would like to vote <laughs> is it okay i mean it's it's all right so we'll put the asterisk back in please stand for the doxology praise god from whom all blessings flow praise god all creatures here below Praise God above the heavenly host, Creator, Christ, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I see I elided over the middle hymn. That's okay. Uh, we'll end today by singing 611 in the New Presbyterian Hymnal, the purple hymnal, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Let us continue standing.
final bit of shared decision making. Do you want to stand for the charge and benediction and choral benediction? Put? Yes? Okay. One vote. As you go from this place today, be filled with God's hope and peace, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Amen. I don't know. I don't know. One person said we should all stand. Please be seated. I'm thinking uh, stand for the charge and benediction and sit for the choral introit and the postlude. Obviously. Thank you to the choir. And before uh, Jared uh, engages us with the postlude and while they're sitting down, I'll remind you of something that I say from time to time about worship. Worship is never perfect, but because of the Spirit, it is always complete. <laughs>